Hi everyone, my name is Ping Chuan and I'm currently studying computer science as a part-time student. So today I'll be presenting to you my final year project which is Python Learning Platform. So I'll go through the background, technology as well as the creation. And a quick background is that many big tech companies have been coming to Singapore to look into investment as well as expanding their company. So this will actually increase the popularity of IT as a whole. So this will mean an increase in coding. Uh, interest as well as, as a larger student intake and this also mean uh, more workload for the teachers. Two existing solutions which I have found online which is LAMPS. Uh, this is what NTU Blackboard has been using. Uh, it is good for conducting simple quiz and uh, some follow-up uh, learning videos uh, but then LAMPS uh, actually un is unable to do coding questions. On the other hand, LeetCode is an online coding challenge platform which does coding really well, but then LeetCode actually has a very steep learning curve as their easy levels are also pretty difficult. So, technology. For my project, I've used uh, several technologies, uh, mainly splitting them into front-end and back-end. So, front-end is actually using React.js, which is developed by Facebook, and the back-end is using Meteor.js, a JavaScript framework for the back-end, MongoDB, which is also a JavaScript uh, database using NoSQL, as well as Flask, which is a Python framework built to be fast and simple to use. So React.js actually focuses on these few very important concepts uh, which helps to enhance the coding experience and make using UI as well as a fast and efficient UI much faster and simpler for the developers, consisting of components, lifecycle methods, render methods, as well as a Redux store to help keep all the global store in one place. Next is Meteor.js, which is a JavaScript framework for the backend, which consists of methods, which acts like API for the client side to call the server side to get some data, as well as publication and subscription, which actually enables the reactivity of the apps uh, in a very simple way by the server publishing the data and the client subscribing it. So therefore, any changes to the data afterwards will be pushed to the client directly. Next will be MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database uh, that uses the concept of collections. And I have managed the fields in the collection using a schema provided by a Meteor JS package. Flask is a lightweight, fast and extensible framework, which is good for the current development as I only require it for the code checking. Some design goals for the project will be a simplistic, minimal and modern UI design which is important in capturing the user's attention and having a better user experience. I would like to showcase two main features of the project, which is the assessment creation as well as the quiz mode. So over here, you can see the admin panel, uh, which actually shows the dashboard uh, in the home page. This gives a few simple metrics, such as how many students we have and assessments that we have created. In the students, we can just see existing students over here listed in the table form. We can also import new students using an Excel file. We can even download the sample file so that students can be imported into the system properly. We can see the tutorial groups over here. These are the existing ones and we can also add new tutorial groups to the system. We can use this button to add multiple tutorial groups to the same academic year and semester over here. In assessment creation, we can see the existing assessment as well. And we can also view them by clicking onto one of the rows. So over here, we can see that the assessment is split into two parts. The left side containing the assessment details, as well as the right side containing the questions. So we can see easily that which one is the correct answer and the test cases for the given coding questions. So we can edit, we can also archive this assessment. So we are going to create a new assessment here. And we are going to give it a name. So we'll name it quiz tree and the description we can name it as such. We can also give it a duration and time left before it starts warning us. So we can put it to have 48. The number of tens if it's zero meaning it will be an unlimited attempt. So we just leave it as zero. So over here we can select the tutorial groups as such and save it. So the tutorial groups will be listed over here. We can also give a starting date 
as well as the ending date and actually show the marks. So now we'll start to add new questions to the assessment. You can actually add new questions using this button here. This will bring out the question model. We have four selections to choose from. Single answer, multi-answer, true or false, or coding questions. So let's choose a single answer question. So let's say this is our question. So we can give them uh, one mark per correct answer, or we can give them two marks per correct answer. So from here, we can add new answers. So over here, we can select the correct answer as this and create a question. So this will add a new row to this list of questions that we have here. Other than adding new questions, we can also copy from existing question, such as all these that I've created earlier. So let's give it a coding question that will test the coding capability of this system. So once we are done, we can hit create and the assessment has been successfully created. So you can see over here that quiz tree has been created. So let's now go back to the student platform. So this is a student platform and I have a student here named Leonard. So we are greeted with this simple interface with quizzes and practice. So once we go into quizzes, we can see that this quiz tree is a new quiz. So let's try to take this quiz. You can select the quiz and there's a warning over here in case any cheating happens. So we'll start the quiz now. So the quiz has started and it, we have 49 minutes left. So this is a coding question and you can actually go in, go ahead and do our coding. So from here, we actually have a simple function to just return an array that is reversed in order, which can actually be done as such. So second question, this is a single answer. So I can only select one answer out of the three. So once I'm done, I can actually hit end quiz if I'm confident. Uh, so I will just end the quiz now. So the quiz has ended. You can see quiz three, our attempt taken first one is actually full marks. So it has actually calculated the score when the student presses end quiz or when the quiz ends by itself. So this is my presentation of this system. Thank you for watching.